Hi guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. And today we're going to be talking about step one preparation. Now, this is one of the most frequently asked questions that I get on my channel, on my page. How did you prepare for step one? So the first step, please limit your resources. There are 50 plus resources for step one. You don't need all of them. How many do you need? Probably like four, five. What do you need? You need UWorld, you need first aid, you need a good video resource that could be bootcamp, that could be boards and beyond. It's up to you. Fourth, you need something to retain all that, Anki. And the fifth resource is totally up to you. And that resource is on a subject that you could be weak in, such as microbiology, you could use Sketchy Micro for that, or pharmacology, Sketchy Pharma for that. But that fifth resource is only up to you limit yourself to five resources and please don't use any more than five as you'll get overwhelmed and you'll think that step one is an exam that cannot be conquered. Now I'm going to talk about how to use these resources. First of all, UWorld. Now UWorld is a complete resource. It is one of the best, if not the best, resources for USMLE. Buy the UWorld early and start questions immediately. It's fine. You don't have to know the topic. The topic will be taught to you by you world. Okay. Now med students, they're overachievers, they're gunners, and they get their ego gets bruised when they start doing questions and they get them wrong. I'm sorry, buddy. USMLE is a journey where you have to defeat your ego and just give in to getting 20%, 10% on your blocks, getting your ego smashed before you can write the step one exam. Your first pass of your world should be the only pass. You're going to do each and every question so well that you won't have to go do it again. So how are you going to use your world? Well, for step two, I would definitely advise going for the random untimed mode. But for step one, which is very memorization or road based, I think you're better off covering it system wise. For example, decide that you want to complete this system by this date, by 10th January or 25th February, and make a schedule according to that system. Do the questions of that system, see what you're getting wrong, mark them on first aid, add the extra points on first aid, and repeat. Do this for each and every system, and you'll have a very good base for everything when you start learning the material again. Now, I primarily used Anki. I did not open a book at all for my step one preparation. Everything is available on the internet. I have made a whole video on how to use Anki, how to implement it into your study schedule. Go check that out if you haven't seen it already. And you're going to download the NemoSign deck, which is free and available on the internet for first aid. It has each and every line of first aid incorporated into a flashcard like structure. And whatever you get wrong or whatever extra is mentioned, note that down into your Anki deck, into your first aid deck, and you'll be unstoppable. Soon you'll start realizing, hey, this exam isn't as difficult as people told me. And you'll see your scores improving, improving, improving until you start a new system and your scores will plummet again because you don't know the questions of that system. Repeat this again and again and again until you've completed all the systems once. Now, Moving on to the basic sciences. How will we do biochemistry? How will we do immunology? Biochemistry, trust me, my U world average around was 80% before starting uh, biochemistry and it dropped to 70 after doing biochemistry and immunology uh, because I had not touched basics in a very long time and they can really plummet your score if you haven't done them properly. But there is only one resource and one resource only that you need for biochemistry. Shout out to Dr. Maham Maksud who told me about this resource and I absolutely agree you don't need anything else for biochemistry. Dirty medicine playlist for biochemistry is everything you need for biochemistry. Whatever else is mentioned in first aid regarding biochemistry, I don't think it's very testable because dirty teaches you each and everything and I owe my biochemistry to him and him only. So biochemistry covered by dirty medicine. Now immunology. Immunology is very troublesome. It's a very conceptual topic filled with numbers such as CD21, CD4, T cell, CD 
eight T cells and the mechanisms and pathogenesis, it's a complex topic. I had to use multiple resources for immunology because my immunology was weak. And so I improved my scores, got my immunology to a decent level, and then I decided to give my NBMEs. Now, for those who don't know, NBMEs is basically a self-assessment, your chances or probability of passing the exam if you test within a week. Okay, so I gave my first NBME and I got, uh, I think I got a 70%, an exact 70%. That's what I remember about my NBME 26. You should consistently be getting 65% or more on your NBMEs to make sure you're in the safe zone for passing. You can still fail with very good NBME scores if you perform poorly on test day and can't handle your nerves. Why did I only do 70% of you would? Well, first of all, I didn't have a lot of time and, um, and I only had October and November to consolidate what I prepared for step one. Here's where I played it smart. I knew which topics, which systems are strong. I knew my reproductive system, my respiratory was strong and I could afford to skip out on the questions and just read first aid for those questions because I knew they were my strong topics and I had studied them very well in med school. So I decided to study smart and focus on things that would get me to the finish line. NBMEs are exams created by the USMLE people and they test the concepts that are repeatedly, repeatedly going to be seen on test day as well. So whatever topic regarding reproductive or respiratory I saw on the NBMEs, I would note them and do them from first aid because I didn't have time to go over the U world questions. And that was pretty much all I needed. On my last NBME, NBME 31, I got an 83%, which was more than enough and gave me a confidence boost that I am ready for this exam. I booked my exam, went and sat in it, had a panic attack throughout the seven blocks of torture that NBME throws at you. And you realize the only thing keeping you sane during the exam is the belief that your NBME scores were good, you're not going to fail this exam. And my friend told me, uh, Dr. Faik Akram, he told me that you've passed. All you have to do is go and sit in the exam. And that's all I did. I went, I sat in the exam, attempted it to the best of my knowledge and passed in December. Another frequently asked question is how do I book the step one exam and all the precautions and all the prerequisites that I have to do before taking the exam. I'll make a whole separate video on this where I am going to go through the step-by-step -step process of how to book your step one exam, how to fill in the identification form 180 and all the other things that you have to do before booking the exam. But that's pretty much all there is to it. You can pass this exam. It's made to pass. Exams have been created to pass, not to fail individuals. So open your books and just start studying. Please don't start you world late. Start it as early as possible. And that's all from my side. Hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.